This is Bill teaching you stuff. I purposely did a video on how to adjust your converted dual fuel to a tri-fuel and there were some mistakes made by me uh, that I wasn't aware of until Champion came out with a tri-fuel generator. It has the same 459cc engine as this generator has. This model number is 10297 and it's an identical engine and what I did was when I looked at it the parts list it showed it had a half inch hose where I had a 3 8 inch hose the system I have set up now is <clears throat> a 3 quarter inch pipe to my shutoff valve and I go from a 3 8 inch pipe down to a half inch gas line for my generator now things that will affect the operation of your generator is there is a regulator that's at your gas meter kind of looks like a circle a flat like a pancake a flat circle if your pressure going into your house is too low it will affect this generator <clears throat> if you're running your stove your dryer at the same time it could affect your generator now the way I had it set up before I had to have full choke and that from from people who mess uh, notified commented on my thing saying it would be running too hot and it was running way too lean so after putting a half inch on here i it was a lot easier i need very little choke and the only reason i use any choke is because of the pressure coming into my house and now on propane using the same regulator i had to adjust it down the proper rpms of this and some people do it by ear i would not do it this is a tachometer I bought on Amazon for 20 bucks. You wrap it around your spark plug wire and this should be running from 3600 RPMs to 3720. That's the high end. I have this set at 30, 3660. It stays around 3660 and goes down to 3600. And it really maintains. 3600 RPMs it will be the, to give you 36 rpms will give you 60 hertz and as your rp as your rpms drop so does your hertz now this is run beautifully now that i've adjusted it and it even runs just as good as it did on propane now that i figured out what was wrong i did change my fittings on my regulator to half inch also which have a big a bigger orifice on it to let more gas in now <clears throat> Don't try to do this by ear. Get a tachometer and adjust it. Now, one thing you also want to do, if you don't have an IntelliGage, some of these generators don't have it, you can get, it's called a kilowatt. It's a, it tells you your hertz, your voltage, everything. I have a Faleco, I don't know if that's how you say it properly. I like this one better. And I, I can see my hertz, I can see every, my voltage and everything else. You need this to adjust this generator. You can't, don't go by ear. You cannot, you can't do it until you know you're in there 100%. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the generator and show you the RPMs. Now, I'm gonna stop this now and move the camera. You may be able to see that this, this is your lock nut. So you gotta loosen this up and turn this. Now, one thing I did find out, if you can, if you look, you can see that it's backed out pretty far. And you may want to have it just starting to where it catches the threads and start adjusting it as you try to start it. Now, you may need a little choke. It, it's like starting any generator. You got to figure it out. Now, on propane, I have to turn this in more because it runs at a higher RPM. But you adjust it here. Okay, I'm going to turn on the battery switch like that. I'm going to lay the phone down and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to put my hand on the choke and try to start it up. Okay, I got a per now remember to prime the regulator. I do it three times. Okay, and here we go.
at 123 volts and 60 hertz. Putting out 247 volts on the, two, the, two, the 240 side. It runs a lot smoother with a little choke applied to it. It's going between 3660 and 3600. Adjusted properly. This generator can run my whole house. 